Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our grade six coding class for today, 28 July 2020. Um, I hope everybody had a wonderful evening and that um, you guys are ready for the day. Today, we will continue with our harvesting with conditionals, um, part two. Yesterday, we started with our conditionals and loops with our harvester, and we will continue with that today. I also just want to um, introduce myself to those of you that don't know me yet, joining us maybe on YouTube or um, in class today. Uh, my name is Mike Haldenex. Okay, guys, so let's quickly look at our objectives for today. Very similar to yesterday, um, seeing that we are continuing with that lesson. There we go. So um, we will still be looking at the nest conditionals to analyze multiple value conditions using if, else if, and else logic. Okay, so, so um, as we saw yesterday and that word, that strange nest, um, it is just it's just where we put, remember the same with nested loops, we put conditionals or loops within other loops or con, um, conditions. So, it's, and yesterday we saw how we used our if statement repeatedly over and over in our loops or in our if else statements. So we needed to use an if inside an if else, but we will just have a look at that again today as well. And also just to pair a loop and a conditional statement together. Um, yeah, that was quite cool yesterday, how we can complete multiple actions and um, unknown values by using our if and if else blocks. Okay, guys, and then obviously just the reason why we do this it is practicing the use of conditionals in different scenarios um, helps to develop our understanding of what conditionals can do. We will use conditionals to help the farmer know when to harvest crops. New patterns will emerge and we will use creativity and logical thinking to determine conditions where code should run and repeat it. Okay. Let's quickly go on to the next slide. What are conditions or what is a condition? It is that statement that a program checks to see if it is true or false. If true, then an action is taken. Otherwise, the action is ignored. And I just quickly want to check with everybody. I see I have a student saying that I'm breaking up a little bit. I just want to find out from everybody else, what is the sound like today? We've done a sound check early this morning. Everything seemed fine. If you guys can just let me know, I would appreciate that. And I'll just try and make some changes on my side. Okay, guys. Um, then our next one that we are working with, the loops. An action of doing something over and over again. Okay, we've dealt with loops quite a bit. Here is our while loop, a loop that continues to repeat while a condition is true. So they are pretty much the same thing. It's just there are certain conditions attached to a while and until loop that just makes them a little different to each other. Um, and that, that would work in certain cases. Now, yesterday I quickly went through our directions with you guys, how, um, understanding directions and how we move around on our screen. 
Now here's a little, if I can even call it a little quiz. I'm just gonna give you guys a direction and A or B, you guys have to just tell me in your, in the chat box, A, B or C. Okay, so if I am coming in from that direction, I am moving, which way am I going to turn if I have to turn right? Is it going to be A or is it going to be, you guys can quickly tell me, just A, B, Cisabile, Adeline, Shimran, Dresser, Ah, oh, okay, good. So many answers coming. I've not even been able to read all those names. They're just flashing by so quickly. Yes, guys. So if we're going to turn right, if we're coming in from that direction, it will be B. Okay, if we're coming in from the other direction, if we're coming in from the right and we want to turn right, There we go, so many answers already coming in as well. I just see them flashing by. I saw a Michael there. Okay, yes guys, that would be A. A where to A, there we go, nicely done guys. Now if we're coming in from the top and we are turning right, which way are we turning? A or B. Cisabile, I saw her flash by. Felice, where I saw that. Kia, I saw. Michael, I saw. A way to. Okay, yes, wow, guys. If we are coming from the top and we are turning right, we will turn towards A. Well done, guys. And then the last one is going to be easy. It's going to be opposite in from the bottom that's the easiest one because that's the way we look at our screen there we go wow the answers are just coming in so fast i can't even see all the names okay guys yes so that will then be b i'm glad we i'm glad we are able to um, understand this so let's move on just a quick look at what we have to our availability in code.org. Remember here we've had our while loops and our until loops. And uh, these came in quite handy. We don't have our normal valued loops. I think depending on, depending on um, the puzzle, we might get them as well. I just want to remind you guys our if, our if statement, will just be, that is a nice one if we wanna check blocks, if we are not sure about values. If there is something, only then our character will do it. And our if else gives us more options of, if there isn't the first option, let's give it a second option. And I just wanna remind you guys again with our else, if it's still unknown whether or not there, there is anything, we also have to put this if block inside the else block because otherwise we saw that yesterday when we did our puzzle. Now, if there wasn't any corn, it wanted, we said else do something. But if that option is also not available, then um, our code is going to run into an error. So we, in the else, we also have to put if there is if we are not sure whether we are going to do anything on that specific block. We'll look again once we go to code.org. And there we go. If you guys give me a moment, I'm going to go switch screens and then share the link with you and we can carry on where we ended yesterday. Okay, so sorry guys, I'm just waiting for it to load on my side.
Okay. Okay, guys, there we go. The link is inside your chat box. You can click on it and then if you are in, just let me know that you are there. Okay, and this is where we stopped yesterday and I said to you guys, Jocelyn is in, I said to you guys that this is going to be an interesting puzzle because now we don't just have crop coming up on the corners where it was easy, we just go to the corner and perform an action and then turn and move on. Okay, this one, let's take this a bit, let's take this one step further. Can you figure out how to pick the pumpkin? Make sure to collect all the corn along the way. Okay, so yes, our last step is the pumpkin. And then all along the way, there are crops coming up and we have to make sure to pick all of it. They also don't give us any values. So what is our first step going to be? Okay. We know, and if we remember, we have to go and check our toolbox. Check your toolbox, what is available for you to use. So we have our move forward, turn left and right. Remember the drop down. Repeat until there are pumpkins, while there is corn, while path ahead, if path ahead, if path to the left. Wow, there are so many different things for us to use. So I think the first thing that I'm going to do is I quite like this repeat until. Just that just going to tell me I'm going to repeat everything until I reach my pumpkins. So we can practice some different ways of answering this, but let's quickly use that one. Repeat until there are pumpkins. What am I going to repeat until there are pumpkins? So I am going to repeat, let's see what there is available. If path ahead, so I'm gonna do if path ahead, I am going to pick, if path ahead, I am going to move, else I'm going to turn left maybe. So there, there are a whole bunch of options available to us now in this specific one. Okay, there are a wide number of available options because we can actually use so many ifs or we can just use the while path ahead. Um, there are so many. So we actually have to decide what are we going, are we just going to use loops? Are we just going to use um, our conditions? So let's, let's just stick to one at a time and then we can work from there. So let me take this one out for now. So I'm gonna put in while path, I'm not even gonna use while path head because I am going to repeat. So let's test them one by one. Let's go for just move. While there are pumpkins, move forward. And then I'm going to put in if where's my pick while there, while there is pumpkin or while there is corn, do pick corn. Because if we see here, we don't have the the if there is corn, we just have the while there is corn. So I'm going to use the while there is corn, what I'm going to do. So let's see what happens if I just use this. I'm going to run into an error here in the corner because I don't have a turn yet, but that's okay. Remember, I can see that there's going to be an error. I just want to test to see that my first line, my farmer picks up everything. So let's run that and see what happens. Okay, that works perfectly. 
so far. Now let's see empty blocks. Great. So we know this works. There are even with the empty blocks. And I see here, um, mine does not look like yours. That was Felice way. That's okay. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to check your code as well. Like I said, there are quite a number of ways we can actually solve this one um, because of the options that they've given us. So there are quite a number of ways and we will test others as well. So there we go. The only thing I need to do now here is turn. So I will see move forward while there's a path ahead. Um, or repeat until pumpkins move forward. While there is corn, turn, um, pick the corn. And now the only thing that I need to do is turn. So I'm going to say if, if there is a path to the left, I am going to turn left. So this is what I saw. And then remember, I just have to put down here. My last step will still have to be to pick the pumpkin. So I have to pick the pumpkin. Okay, that's what I've got. So let's reset and see. And then we will go to, I just want to go back to my chat. Who was that that gave us Felice way? And then we can look at her code as well. Um, let's quickly check. Run. So my farmer is checking two things, checking if there's corn and checking if there's a path to the left. And then she runs all the way to the end and our last action will be pick pumpkin. There we go. So let's, I'm gonna go to my Lisa, I hope you, you are willing to give us your code. So let me go. Hi, Felice, where are you? I'm fine, sir. That's good. You say your code looks a little bit different? Uh, yes, sir, because I okay. am in lesson 12. Oh, okay. So, okay. No, no, no. You, you said your code looks a bit different. I thought you were on the same one as ours. No, not a problem. So we are going to go through just so that everybody can see the ones. Thank you, Felice. Way. Okay, guys. Here we go. Our code. Uh, just remember that we can play around. There are also if path, if you look in ahead, so you can do the if path ahead. What we're gonna do, we're gonna move. And then also we can see that there's this one, if path ahead, do something. Um, so let's quickly change to see if we, can, if we can solve it with this, the if path ahead. If path ahead, what are we going to do? We are going forward. Um, but we also have to, else I'm going to turn left. So that is going to guide me through the maze. Let's just reset. That's going to guide me through the maze. But now I still need to make sure that I collect the corn. So I'm also going to put the wild corn. While there is corn, what am I going to do? I am going to. So let's see if that actually works. The only thing that might, we might run into here is our pick pumpkin but we will we will look at that let's see if this works okay so you see why that what happened over there can you make sure you don't leave any crop behind okay while there is corn pick corn we just have to put this all in a loop else turn left. Now, here is, there weren't any corn, so he was looking for it, and when there wasn't any corn, what did he do? He moved straight on to turn left, so we can see that that didn't quite work out. 
I'm sure if we play around with it a little bit, let's see what else. We don't have the normal loop inside, so that might create some problems. Um, let's see. And remember what I said about the else. Now it is, let's take that one out and let's put that if path to the left, turn left. So it doesn't want to do that specific one, only if there is a path in. So let's try and test it that way, see if it works now. This is what I explained to you on my slides, because here, while there is something, they're gonna do it else, they're gonna try and do that. So we have to make sure that there's a condition on that as well. So let's quickly see, let's run that, see what happens. See if this one is not quite working out. So we have to tweak this, but I don't wanna to spend too, Okay, and I see Simram is not understanding some. Okay, guys, what are we gonna do? Instead of playing around with it too much, I'm gonna spend more time on explaining what we are doing um, because we don't want to lose anybody joining us right now. Okay, but first things first, remember what we always do. We try and solve, for those of you joining us for the first time, we always try and solve the first line write the code for the first line, and then only are we gonna start putting in our repeats. So if I can quickly use this one to explain, I'm gonna take out that loop, I'm gonna put it over here. Reset, what would be the first thing we need to do? We don't know how many cobs of corn are under each sprout. So we are going to move forward, and while there is corn, we are going to pick corn. So I hope that helps. While we're, so let's see what happens if I run this. And then if path to the left, do turn left. Okay. Our little farmer is checking this spot over here to see if there is any corn. Okay, before, because that is in our in our so it's move forward. Right now it's only move forward once. Okay, while there is corn, do pick corn. There isn't any corn. And then if there's a path to the left, turn left. So that is what our farmer is changing just on this one square. And right now you can see it's not working, okay? So we have to put in something to make our farmer move to the next block. And that is why we had a loop, a loop. What are we going to loop? Repeat until there are pumpkins. So we are going to repeat these same actions over and over again until we reach the pumpkin. So what are we going to repeat? Move forward, check if there's corn, if path ahead. Now, each time we get to the end, if there's a path and there isn't a path ahead, what's gonna happen? We're gonna go back to the first step, move forward, and we will move to the next spot. Okay, so let's quickly see what happens. There we go. Now we see that it runs through the whole code every, on each and every block and tries to perform any one of those three actions moves forward while there are or is corn picket. If there's a path to the left, turn left, and then we go back to move forward. And we will repeat this over and over and over again until we reach a pumpkin. Once we reach a pumpkin, then we are going to pick it. So I hope that helps for you guys that just joined us. But as we go through the puzzles, you'll get a better understanding. I know jumping in the middle of a lesson like this is a little difficult, but um, I'm sure if you just give it some time, you will start seeing what we are doing. Okay, puzzle number eight. Let me just now, puzzle number eight is a challenge puzzle, so this is going to be a little harder. There's the link for everybody again, but I'm sure together we can figure it out. Now look at this. 
if we see this path all the way around here, luckily it's all along the edge. So every time we are going to run into something to reach the pumpkin, okay? So first things first, let's check our toolbox to see what we have available. It says collect all corn and lettuce, then pick the pumpkin. So now we have two things we have to pick up along the way, corn and lettuce. I don't want you to be discouraged, even if you've never done it before, you will see as we explain it through it, you will be able to pick up what we are doing. Move forward, turn right. If there is lettuce, what do we do? If there is corn, do else this. Okay, so this one gives us two actions and seeing that we have two different crops, I think we will rather use the if there is corn and then pick pumpkin at the end, pick corn. And then here we have some while loops while there is corn, pick it while path ahead, repeat until there are pumpkins. And now here we also have our repeat, our normal repeat loop. Okay. So guys, the first thing, let's do this first line. First thing we are going to do we are going to move forward. So if we just did this one line, maybe we would have used the while path ahead because this is just a straight path ahead. What are we going to do? We are going to move forward. I'm just doing this for those that have just joined us. Just focus on the first line. Now remember, we are going to have to change this loop this while path ahead, we're just gonna change it to something different, but the code is going to be the same. While path ahead, this straight line, what are we going to do? We're gonna move forward. Now, if, if there is corn, what are we going to do with the corn? We are going to pick corn. Otherwise, remember we cannot just put in pick lettuce because then our farmer is gonna get stuck. If there isn't corn, our farmer is going to want to pick lettuce. So we also have to put an if in there. Only try and pick lettuce if there is lettuce. We have to remember that. That is a spot where we can run into some problems. So here we go. First line, move forward. If there is corn, pick corn. Otherwise, if there is lettuce, pick letters. Let's run that and see if our first line works. There we go. First line, what are we doing every time we move forward? If there is corn, we pick the corn. If there is lettuce, we pick the lettuce. Great stuff. So that works perfectly. What are we going to do when we get to this corner over here? We are going to turn right. Okay. And I think if we just put, maybe this will even work if we just use it like this. Um, right now, remember, we're going to put this on the outside. So once the path is finished, we are going to turn. And then if we loop this, we might even be able to get to the pumpkin. So look at this. Let's run it. Keeps running until there is no more path. And then I'm turning. Now, if I just repeat this, let's see one. Now there's also just a straight path over here, straight path over here, straight path here, straight one here and here. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's loop it six times. Everything now, I'm going to loop everything six times. What am I going to loop? While path ahead, move forward. If there is any of these items, pick them. And then at the end of the path, turn right. So let's quickly run it and see what happens. There we go. Now the loop starts over again for the second time. Path is finished. Loop starts over for the third time. 
loop fourth. Ooh, we've missed something over here. We've missed something over here. And can you guys see why we missed that? The problem is our conditionals over here. It only picks corn or lettuce once. Now here we had the problem of three items. Okay, so this is how we test our code. When we run our code and see if anything, maybe if we were lucky and there was also a one over here, our code would have gone all the way to the end and we could have just picked the pumpkin. Now we see we can't do that because the value changes. We cannot just pick once. We have to pick more than once. And I see, okay, so we have to pick more than one. So what are we going to use? There we go, here's our while. While there is corn, pick corn. So not if, as long as there is corn, I'm gonna pick corn. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take all this out. I'm gonna put it here so you can see, I'm not gonna change much. I'm just gonna put in our while loop. While there is corn, I am going to pick corn or while there is lettuce, let me just change that. While there is lettuce, what I'm going to do, pick lettuce. So it's the same kind of code. I just while path ahead, move forward. But while there is corn, pick it. But while there is lettuce, pick that. Let's quickly see if this works. So luckily, now look at that. Our loop just runs there. So we will have to put all this inside so that it actually does our code step by step. So look at that. Let's reset and run it again. There we go. Now we pick it up because it's inside our path that we are walking. This is how we learn, guys. We put it next to each other. So thank you for everybody for being patient while we explain this to our new students. Don't ever be afraid, just there we go. Now we've picked up everything in this spot over here. So this is how we write code. We write it, we test it to see if it works. If it doesn't work, then we change something. And look at that, it is very similar. Here, we had the if statement, if there is corn. But then we have to remember, okay, I'm only picking up one. I'm not picking up if there is more than one item. That's only one action. Now, while there is corn, it doesn't matter how much they are, as long as there is something to pick, our farmer will pick that corn. If there isn't corn while there is lettuce, our farmer will pick lettuce. Now we know right here at the bottom, we only have one pumpkin left. So what am I going to do? I am going to pick pumpkin. I just want to tell you guys one more thing. We could have also done something a little different because guys, remember we have a loop here also called repeat until there are pumpkins. So what are we going to repeat until there are pumpkins? We could have taken out the repeat six times. I'm gonna show you that there are more than one way to solve something. I'm gonna take out the repeat block. I'm just gonna say, while there are pumpkins, what am I going to do? Let's put this in here. And I'm going to take away this repeat block. And I'm also going to put in my pick pumpkins that I just threw away. There we go. And this should still also work. So let's see. There we go. Same thing because it's also a loop. And the condition of the loop is something that I can use. It says 
repeat everything until there are pumpkins. So as long as there are no pumpkins along the way, our farmer will still repeat the actions. And only once our farmer reaches the end, then she will pick. There's our last, our last move is pick a pumpkin. So there we go, guys. We can solve these puzzles in more than in more than one way. Okay, let me quickly see. Um, I just need to share the link again with everybody. And I am, I, yes. Please explain to us, uh, Felisa, what is wrong? Then maybe we can work on it. Let me just see, I hope it's the same puzzle. Um, let me just go to my participants. Sorry guys, I have to jump between two code.org and Zoom. If I want to speak to you guys, I have to go back to Zoom just to quick check if anything out in the checks. Okay, I don't see any. Yes, please tell us what's wrong in the chat box and then we're gonna try and work on it. Um, I'm gonna post puzzle number nine on it um, in the chat box in the link so you guys can join me on this one if you got stuck on the previous one and you weren't able to um, get through that one. And guys, remember there are tips as well. You can use the tips. This one is very similar, but luckily we can you can see up, we will still walk until we get to this little cow over here. Turn, get the path. So also still this path, every time we can move, move while there's a path ahead. What are we gonna do? Or we can repeat until there are pumpkins. Our pumpkin is the last, it, our, okay, let's say, so don't worry about the previous um, puzzle. Please, let's start on this one and we will go through it step by step again. Okay. Guys, so remember, first line. What are we going to do in our first line? First line is move forward, pick everything that is available. Only then are we going to come down, turn. Remember, so we can use any of our loops or you can code block for block for block. Okay, here we have if path ahead. Also, what can we do? We can move forward if there is corn. Now we've seen that if we use this, we only performing one action at a time. So we actually want a loop where things are done over and over again. Maybe we can use our if blocks inside a loop as well, that doesn't, but the loops are so nice right now that we have a, we have a repeat until they are pumpkins. So that's gonna repeat everything we do until we finally get to this pumpkin over here. While path ahead, it's gonna do everything in a straight line. While there is a path, what am I going to do? But because we know of this pumpkin at the end, I am going to use my repeat until there are pumpkins. And then we have to ask ourselves, what are we going to repeat? Now, remember to get to this first block, what am I going to do? I have to move forward. Let's just do this one, one block, this first block. What am I going to do? I'm going to move forward. Now I can see that there is a crop on that block. What do I have to do? I have to check. I don't know. Collect all the corn and lettuce, then pick the pumpkin. Now it can be corn or it can be lettuce. So I have to tell myself while there is corn, what am I going to do with the corn? I am going to pick the corn. While there 
is lettuce. Remember to change it there. While there is lettuce, what am I going to do? I'm going to pick the lettuce. Okay, so you just have to ask yourself every time, what is it that I'm going to do on every single block? What am I going to do on every single block? Now I'm going to move forward. Here we have move forward. If there is corn, pick it. Or while there is corn, pick it. Otherwise, while there is lettuce, pick it. If none of those things are there, what am I going to do? I'm going to go move forward again. So let's run it. Our first line should work perfectly. Look at that. Okay, now we've run into our little cow over here. Okay. I can see now that our little farmer is not just going to let us put a turn in. So when I get to that point, where are we going to turn? Um, we are going to turn right. Now we can't use the if there is a turn, um, if there is a path to the left, turn left, because then it can, she will be able to turn anywhere here because there is space for her to turn. Okay. We have to get her over here, but it seems like even if she gets to this point, she is going to turn right. Uh, she's going to walk into the cow because that is still a path. There's just something standing on the path. Okay, I hope you guys understand that. I'm going to put something in and we're going to run it just to see what happens. Does she run into the cow even if we tell her to turn right? But now I'm thinking we might have to use the while there is a path ahead, move forward. Because otherwise she is going to run into this cow. While there is a path ahead, what are we going to do? We are going to move forward. So this is quite a in-depth lesson. So there's a lot of stuff, especially if you're joining us new today, it is going to be a bit confusing, but luckily we jump between lessons. Some are a little bit easier. So let's quickly reset and see what happens. Now look at that. Is in a terrible loop and she's, this is what it is all about. We practice. We go through the code and we, we test what happens okay so i know i cannot use the while path ahead move forward button so let's take that out i don't want to confuse you guys but i have to show you what happens if we don't test everything now here i can see actually look at that our farmer is looking so the wild path ahead might work because now she isn't running into the cow. She is standing right in front of it. I hope you guys can see that. Okay, so I wanted to show you the dif difference. Okay, I'm gonna reset again. And I took out the wild path ahead, move forward. And there we go, Ndobo said he's got it. I'm glad to hear that. Now listen guys, this is why I wanted to show you this. Here she is looking she's stopping in front of a cow. If I take that out and reset, look what happens. She runs straight into him. Here we go. Look at that. She is even moving. Look at that. She runs straight into him. We have to make sure to see what every action is doing. Okay. So what are we going to do? Now, I know we have to use the wild path ahead so that our farmer checks what she's doing. Okay, so let's, I see that we don't have a lot of time, so I'm gonna run through this one quickly. Here we go. So while path ahead, I'm gonna put that in there. What am I going to do? I'm gonna put this everything inside. While path ahead, move forward. If there isn't path to go forward anymore, what I'm, uh, well, while I move, I'm gonna check then. If there isn't a path ahead anymore, only then am I going to turn. 
Okay, so I hope, see guys, this is why where sequencing comes in very, uh, comes in a lot. We have to focus the sequence of our process. Let's quickly run this one, and I see our time's up. I want to show now the difference. I'm going to move forward, move forward, move forward. I'm still checking. There isn't a path, only then am I turning. So guys, play around with your, your actions and your loops. See what happens. Remember, the most important thing is putting them in the correct sequence. And then the right last Ed, one that I didn't put in is pick the pumpkin and that will be right at the bottom. That will be our very, very last step. I know this was a bit confusing to some of you guys, but um, I'm sure that you guys learned something. We will focus on this a bit more again tomorrow, but unfortunately that is our time for today. And thank you for all the, all the students that were so kind and patient with our new students. And then um, I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon. See you guys again tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye-bye, guys.